All right, so uh, last week's video seemed to, or sorry, two weeks two weeks ago video seemed to not do horribly, so I figured I'd try this again, also because I just really like making this style of content. So last time we did the new Rakdos card coming out with Thunder Junction, which already did come out. Can confirm, that commander, super fun, would recommend if uh, anyone enjoys playing Rakdos or Aristocrats or just generally being a bad person in a pod. And on the note of being a bad person, I picked up the Gaunti Precon when it came out, and I've been really enjoying making a deck around it, so I figured, why not make that the video? So, first off, we're going to obviously go into the card, and then we're going to go into the sort of deck that I've been building around him so far. So, Gaunti. This man actually seems pretty good. From uh, my first first impressions, you know, he's five mana, but he's a five five. Gives you three colors, classic Saltai shit. Um, not much really to go off of there. He's sort of neutral in terms of a, an individual combat person, but after reading his abilities, he's. I'm not so sure he's going to be necessarily a combat oriented commander, um, because he has a nice set of abilities. First one being that spells you cast with your own cost one less, so obviously these are going to be spells that you're taking from your opponents. Whichever way you want, my first thought is Opposition Agent, but there's a ton more that we're going to get into. But the really funny one is whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you look at the top card of their library, then exile it face down, you can play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you can use any mana to cast it. This is really interesting because it it actually stacks with his first ability, which just pair up to make it so that whenever you deal combat damage to a player, you get to exile top card of their library and it already costs one less to cast, and you get to use whatever mana you can to cast it. So, I don't know, free soul ring? Free soul ring, all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Although that would be, it'd be a pretty horrible person to do that, but that totally, that totally works. So overall, this card... Silly. Super silly. But that's that's the just Gaunti himself. So now we're gonna get into sort of how we can make the silly guy into a silly commander. Uh so yeah, this is the game plan. They're not gonna like us. I'm just gonna be up front here. They're not gonna like us. The first thing I noticed the first thing I noticed when we were uh putting this deck together was Two of his colors are black and blue. You know what that means, folks. This is classic Thassa's demonic consultation stuff. We love Thoracle. I this is phenomenal. Uh, also super toxic. If you don't want to play the game, solid three mana combo to win you the game, or four mana if we pull a tainted pact instead. That also works. Nothing wrong with it. But if we feel like playing the game instead of playing solitaire we can you know sort of lean into the combat aspect of gaunti's second ability which we can use pretty easily considering there are a lot of low cost unblockable creatures that we don't need any high power creatures to get through to activate the ability to steal cards we just need one damage especially since it's one or more creatures that are dealing damage to an opponent Unfortunately, it doesn't proc for every single creature that swings. So, I mean, yeah, we could use one big creature, but at the same time, it says whenever one or more, one or more creature. Hold on, let me just. Yeah, it says whenever you deal combat damage to a player. So the creatures attacking a, an opponent theoretically don't stack, but the opponents can stack if you attack multiple different opponents at the same time. So if you're in a pot of four, you attack three opponents with those cards so let's say you swing all of these guys at a different opponent you get three cards off of that so it'd be more in your best interest to try to avoid falling into the rabbit hole of just trying to swing to take their life total to zero as fast as possible that is not the game plan if you want to do that there's a good amount of gruel commanders out there that would happily let you do that but Unless you're playing Otrimi Voltron, I don't really see that happening in Sultai. I could totally be wrong, though. Please let me know if I am. Um, but 
anyway, before I digress too far, we also have ninjutsu stuff and island walk stuff. It doesn't have to be purely unblockable things, although we are going to aim for that. The benefit of these guys, while they are going to be more expensive, is they have added effects when they deal combat damage to a player. So when you get through with those unblockable or those really hard to block guys, you're going to get the Gaunti trigger. But then you're also going to get one of these guys to trigger. So essentially, something like Fallen Shinobi would be insane to proc off. Because let's say you swing with a Triton Shorewalker, only costs one mana, right? Unblockable, he gets through, you ninja do that out for four. All of a sudden, you get the Gaunti trigger, so you exile top part of their library, and you can play that for one less. So, especially if it's early ish in the game, you can get that for maybe for free. And then on top of that, Fallen Shinobi triggers, exile top two cards of the library again, and those cards you can play for free. A bunch of other stuff that does that, but doubling up on those kinds of triggered combat effects really gonna be the uh, the meat and potatoes of your whole deck style so it's like you want to be doing lots of combat but you don't necessarily want to be doing lots of combat damage it's what you get from the combat damage that you're going to be using right and then obviously because we have a lot of abilities that are triggering we're going to be using a couple things to you know beef up those ability activations so we got felix five boots who uh is a really solid guy in and, of, in and of himself in the command zone but in the 99 he works really well with gaunti just because he pairs that up really well get those extra get those extra triggers roaming throne also works really well not quite as efficient when it comes down to uh maximizing the combat triggers with each individual creature you have on the field but i mean at that point probably just do some <laughs> do some uh battle analysis look at you know what the best bang for your buck essentially with roaming throne but both these guys really good highly recommend them um lithoform engine is in here i am not super super sure about this one uh lithoform i just put it in here because if you have a bunch of extra mana from stolen things you can create uh copies of permanence you can also copy their trigger abilities obviously but then also we do have a few really hard hitting uh instance sorceries in here where if you feel like it you can copy those i just feel like it's a versatile copy machine essentially uh although then again not really not really that uh practical outside of those applications so this one's sort of a sort of sort of a eh, you know i would sort of leave this one up to how you subjectively play the deck it just works for me might not work for you um then obviously we have i not obviously sorry uh we have planeswalkers which i originally wasn't going to put in this deck um although i will admit i read tasha and i just sort of said yep we're <laughs> we're putting that one in um especially with her minus three which you can get off the bat she is a little pricey with the five mana cost but at the same time she has she has a triggered effect for uh whenever you cast a spell you don't own which is perfect for gaunti uh her plus one is really solid for giving you that in for the one less to cast spells that you don't own and then the minus three is literally just a freebie do whatever you want oh you you exiled someone's 13 cost eldrazi sure mine now that's fine and i looked at the new jace from thunder junction and i do have kind of mixed feelings about him to be completely honest but the thing is i just really like that minus six to be too completely honest with you and the plus one to draw a card and discard a card obviously you're not going to be able to play him in the early game unless you have some really weird thing going on with your board which i don't even know if it's possible with this deck but at the same time He's a really cheap mid to late gameplay. He has a lot of value to him. I He's just a good value piece, is my reasoning. Although, again, that one is subjective. But I would definitely look at Tasha, at the very least, if you're not going to include her. If we get to the late game, speaking of, we have Brainstiller Dragon and Villainous Wealth. Brainstiller Dragon comes in the pre-con. Super solid card. Obviously very costly in terms of mana. But 
with the with this kind of deck, uh, we are going to be sort of looking to drag up the game if we can't close it out ourselves. Which we have fifty counters. We have like fifty counter spells in this deck. So to be honest, that's sort of what we're looking for anyway. As long as you know, God forbid, we can't find our Thoracal. But at the end of the day, Range to the Dragon is really good for that. And then Villainous Wealth, I just feels a really solid card for Sultai Smash and Grab. I was going to do Outrageous Robbery, but honestly, it was like I wanted to have Villainous Wealth and a Heartless Construction at the same time. And those with Brain Stone Dragon, that's already three really high cost spells. And I do want this to be a bit more of a, uh, a flexible mana base type deck, so I don't want to be spending all my mana on my own turn, right? And then that's. I don't really know what else to say about that. So yeah, that, that is the deck. Um, I. Please let me know if there's any other cards you think that should be in here. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not super experienced with the Sultai color combination. I do really enjoy the individual colors, except blue, but I'm working on that. Um, I do really, really, really like Golgari, and uh, blue just feels like a nice touch to it. So Sultai is something I'm going to be getting more and more into, but... At the end of the day, that's enough rambling from me. Uh, I'm going to see you guys for the next one.